Okay, so here is our key cutting room. This is where we obviously cut all of our keys. Uh, and I'll just kind of go by machine by machine. This one's set up for biaxial. This is kind of a backup machine for M3 and M4. Actually, we've got the M3 jaw, or this is the M4 jaw, and the M3 jaw right here. Uh, but we rarely use this one that's more so of a, a backup because we've got an ITL that handles M3 and M4. But you'll see on all of these Medeco machines on this side, uh, they're all pneumatic. So you hit the button, it makes the plunge cut. You don't have to use the lever or anything like that. So this one's set up for biaxial. Trying to move this along. Uh, this one's original. And actually you can see it's kind of a, a neat one. This is set up to cut full step, half step. So full steps, 30 thousandths and, and um, no, uh, yeah, 30 thousandths and half steps, 15. Um, the difference between the two is uh, when you have two numbers on one selector, the one on the right represents the full step. Everything else is half step. But it's just a, you know, standard, one of the original Medeco key machines on the center right. And again, you've got your pneumatics for plunge cuts. Uh, over here is kind of a backup, again, a lot of redundancy here, uh, but this one's neat because it'll do not only biaxial M3 and M4 if we wanted to change out the jaw, uh, but it's also capable of doing uh, original, so left, right, center, and then you've got four and a half cuts. And you can kind of see, uh, you got L, C, and right, and then your four and a half cuts. And then on these, the, the way you differentiate between the two, obviously that's left, right, and center, but uh, you go with your red dot, that's uh, original. That'll set your spacing for your original. And then it's kind of faded, but you can see, again, half and full step for original is that kind of red, and then the blue is biaxial. So that's a very neat machine but it never hardly gets used. Uh, this one here is set up for key mark, uh, one of our keyways. Uh, this gets heavy use now because A1 is out of business and uh, we can't get parts for our green machines, so we have to use this one, uh, but it'll cut six and seven pin. And then unlike the rest where it's got a, uh, a switch on the side, you've got a foot switch to run this one. So you just hold it down while you're doing that. Uh, so this will cut key mark. And then kind of, I guess, showing some more redundancy. Um, over here, we've got an ITL. This one also does key mark and it's set up. I mean, it can cut anything really, um, but we've got a default when power's off and it comes back on, uh, it defaults to, to 54, which is A2 spacing and depth. And that'll cut um, our specific key mark keyway, which I think is a, 14 degree offset. It's got a special jaw in there, or insert, I guess is what they call it. More of the same here for this next one, another ITL, but this one for uh, X4. And same thing, set up just for it. You can use that to, to cut your X4. We've got a A1 green punch that still works on that. So we're still punching them out by hand, but this again, redundant backup. Uh, over here, we've got two HPC, uh, the automatics, you know, just put your key in there, gauge it all, and then hit it, and it'll run along left and right for you. Uh, a backup 1200 diesel engine of key machines. We've got one of those. Rarely use it, but sometimes you need to. Uh, over here are the main ones that get use. I'll start with this one right here. This one's set up and was custom made to cut Medeco. Uh, we'll do original, but it's mainly used for biaxial M3 and M4 because um, those are the majority of our systems now. Uh, still have some original out there, but those get cut on one of the machines I showed you earlier. But this one's set up. Um, so you've got your four and a half cuts here, center left, right. You can set your angles and depths that way and then clear and it'll cut it and you can see that it will start to rotate and shift all of that. Like I said it does um, biaxial M3 and M4. And hopefully it won't be M4 is that they uh, I guess I guess they sell them now if they sent us one before. Uh, 
we got a special kind of insert. You can see it's recessed to protect those finger pins, side pins, that interactive element. So otherwise, if you just use a traditional one, like you were setting it up, it will cut for a, a, with a biaxial jaw or an M3 jaw. The problem is, is if you tighten it down, you risk uh, crimping that interactive element and it won't work it'll stop moving now we never had that problem but i guess that problem could exist so they gave us that special jaw so that's what we use these other two here are just kind of catch-alls middle one's probably the one that gets the most use uh, out of the two these will cut anything uh, well anything in itl can cut out all of them will really but uh main uh, mainly um sergeant schlag corbin russell and stuff like that some desk keys and stuff like that um but they'll They'll cut them all. We've kind of got this one over here. This one's really set up. If we've got a large run of originals, instead of manually doing it with the Medico machine, we'll run it through this one. Uh, I don't know why it got that privilege, but uh, that's just the one we use for it. And, uh, so those are all three. Our big ones get the most use. And then we've got some you know, very rarely used ones. You know, there's a slaughter for safe deposit sort of mailbox keys uh, another biaxial machine this one's strictly biaxial but um i don't even know what it's plugged in it's never used it's just specific keyways uh a framing again i don't know if i've ever used that here over six seven years haven't haven't used it but we got it uh but then other than that we've got all the blanks all the restricted stuff, high security stuff's in the back in a TL30 safe. Keep that all locked up. This is just stuff that's not restricted and you can get anywhere else. Um, various tryout keys so we can help identify keyways. Uh, for example, here's one with uh, Schlage quad keyways. That one's, I can't read. VURP, I mean, there's the whole series. So we've got a bunch of those. And I've got a bunch of Medico tryout sets, but again, I keep those locked up. But uh, everything from key mark to original m3 biaxial and m4 and now x4 uh, and then some more test keys if we stamp something wrong we put it up here that way when we're pinning up just a cylinder if it's just a cylinder order no keys we've got something uh, we can use without wasting a, a brand new blank uh, so that's where we keep our setup keys or test keys is what we call them then over there is just um just key gauges to help decode. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Uh, we do keep uh, some parts and stuff in here, ITL manual and all that. These are, um, well, when we had the uh, A1 or the uh, A1 punch running, this is what we would uh, test it out with and, and calibrate it with. We had specific uh, cores and generations of keys. That way you could uh, determine where you are, where you're getting, what you need to be. Uh, and there's some more A1 jaws, but again, that's not what's broken, so we can't use those anymore, but we got them. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much it. I will show you one other cool machine we've got off back here. I guess this is the uh, stamping room. I'll make a video about this, but here's our A1's uh, green machine. That's obviously an A2, and we've got one here original for a4 and then we got a few spares down there for the the uh the a1 but our 7 series went kaput it's the uh part that holds onto the key it broke off and you know you can't just interchange that with anything else so it's it's gone um so those are the punches again use most of those for x4 uh keyways because it's just so fast and then back here's the last i guess key machine well we got two of them back here uh Kaba 8, Baldwin 8, uh Gemini, the dimple keys. You can see there's the guide right there for the left hand side of it. It's uh you know you just wheel it in and set your depth and plunge cut and all of that. And then we've got a uh framing uh tubular originator, which this thing is amazing. This is interchangeable. I can't remember how you pull it up. There he goes. But it, uh, seven pin center, seven pin offset left or right. I think we've even got an eight one. So there's my dog Luna barking. Uh, 
but uh, that's it. Those are our key machines. And I will make videos for the pinning room and the stamping room going forward.